I just heard God tell me, take him to church and pray for him before he leaves. What God? Like I, I told him I forgave already. And so I was just really praying on it. He pretty much didn't let me off the hook about it. And I'm like, okay. But in that moment, as I was like just praying for him, I immediately felt like physical chains coming off of me. Like there's no way to explain it, but I just felt like all the bondage being stripped off of me as I was praying for him. Hey guys, it's Leanne. It's Lena. Welcome back to another week on our channel. So for this week, I just wanted to take some time to discuss and just kind of share for those of you who watched the last video about how I was in a emotionally and a mentally abusive relationship. I just wanted to take some time to share how I've been able to heal from that and hopefully be able to help anybody else who is currently going through their healing process or just um, just in need of any advice. And again, since this was her personal testimony, I'll just share some of the things that I noticed in her healing journey and also any advice that I have as well um, for healing. For those of you who have gone through heartbreak and just the pain of betrayal and who have gone through a significant breakup, nothing can really, I don't think any of us can ever really prepare for just the whole process of healing because it's definitely very very gruesome and I can definitely say for myself it was one of the one of the darkest seasons of my life um, I think even more so than being in the relationship because like the state that a significant breakup leaves you in you often find yourself really like questioning everything and questioning God and just questioning why you had to go through such pain and for me I spent a lot of time dealing with that and how it came out and expressed itself it was oftentimes through a lot of anger and bitterness and I was not who I normally was obviously um, just going through all that and I lashed out a lot and I ended up having a lot of like violent tendencies where I would destroy things and just punch a lot of things just because I just was trying to deal with all the pain that I was harboring inside of me and I just didn't know how to release it. I know that for each person individually they cope in a different way and so for me oftentimes how it manifests in me is through anger and I've been working on trying to get better at that but I can admit that I was definitely not healthy in that st uh, in that state and I also took it out on my sister which she definitely didn't deserve and I just thank God for the grace and the mercy that she showed me through it all because I don't I don't know how I would have done it um, just by myself but um, and even in that time where she did like take it out on me like I had to just keep in mind like she was just trying to heal from all that brokenness so I couldn't judge and even when like that caused a tension in our relationship I still couldn't see her as what she was going through because I knew like that wasn't her and I just knew like I had to just be there no matter what so this is just encouragement to other people who if you're close to someone who's going through an abusive relationship don't leave their side like I understand like it can be really hard when someone's trying to heal and they have those moments where they're triggered and stuff and it can end up being taken out on you but again just have the perspective that they're just in a lot of pain so don't take it personal because they need you more than anything. I'm extremely grateful that she was there for me because from the little that we've shared about like our family upbringing i don't think i would have been able to open up about this experience with anybody else beside my sister our family just wouldn't really understand and just do a lot of victim blaming so i'm just grateful that god saw fit that i had a sister just from birth just so that we could just carry each other through all that we would go through in life and so just in that time where I was just going through all that anger and just just being super destructive in that healing process I just remember just feeling super unlovable and just not understanding why nobody could love me or just show the same love that I showed them and I just 
I just had a lot of questions and I just couldn't understand it. And I just was in a place where I just blamed myself and just thought I was just not worthy of love. And it was in those very moments that it was really God who stepped in and like nobody else could have healed me the way God could because he is our only healer. And it was just so like mind blowing to me that God would choose those very moments to draw close to me because I'm just like, I wouldn't even want to be around me seeing the way that I was. I was like, Ugh, like <laughs> get away from me. You're, you're super toxic right now. Why I'm not going to deal with you. But it was in those very moments that God just loved on me. And like that's why I just will just forever be grateful for, just be forever grateful for him. Um, and this is also encouragement for those of you who feel like you're too ugly to come to God, that that's exactly the moments that God wants you to come to him. Because a lot of times, a lot of times we don't really understand the love of God. Like we hear all the time, like God is love and God loves us. But a lot of times we kind of just brush that off like as a, as just a, a nice saying or something good to say. But when it comes to the moments in your life where you're extremely broken and you feel lost and you don't know what to do, those are the moments where you're supposed to come to him and you're not supposed to be all put together and perfect. Like he wants you to come with your mess and not to carry that and bury that inside of yourself because only he can give you the strength to continue going rather than you trying to carry the load by yourself. In those moments where I just felt super like, why would anybody be want to be around me when I'm just this hot mess? It was just super humbling to me to experience that type of love that he would choose that specific moment more than any other moment to just draw near. And like we've said in other videos, for us to be pretty much in full-blown idolatry and for God to still chase us even as we were chasing other gods in our life and chasing the wrong things and chasing relationships and chasing after a leader it just showed us like just through all that it was ultimately it was him that we were searching for this whole time and it took all that for us to finally realize like oh this you were the one that we were missing the whole time and yeah it was just super redemptive just to be able to experience that type of uh, encounter with him in those very dark moments in life. It just really showed that he was the only one who could fill that void while we were just so desperate to try to find community and find these relationships and find belonging in the world. He ultimately showed us that only Jesus could have filled the void that we were trying to fill and heal us from those roots of rejection and like he's the one who has adopted us into his family to finally like surrender and actually experience that and just finally like stop running and stop trying to search we each had our own like healing process we were going through this together but i also was going through my own thing with this relationship that i was in on top of our cult experience so it was just a lot to try to um work through and so as he was just drawing near and we were just drawing near to him through just going deeper into his word and just really learning of his love as the months went on and it was like nearly a year after the breakup when my ex reached out to me again and just notified me that he would be moving out of state and in that moment even though we hadn't I had like moved on and forgiven and healed already and been like on this continuous healing journey just when he reached out that one last time it was a super bittersweet moment because it was like for those of you who know Milwaukee Milwaukee's super small so there's always this tendency to run into people who you know and things like that uh, it was bittersweet for me because it just like really marked finally the end of this chapter of my life and it was like God was like shifting that completely and not have like really any residue of that in my life any longer and so he just wanted to reach out and just let me know that and just wanted to express his apologies once again and just to be able to say his final goodbye and at that time many of the times that he would reach out to me I just kind of left it alone or if I felt led to then I would respond but I just wanted to be intentional about protecting my heart because I know oftentimes whenever I did open that door to communication it would just kind of reel me back in and undo the healing that I had done so I was just being careful and just 
discerning of when I should respond. And I was just learning, like, not everything requires a response all the time. And the fact that I had already, like, expressed to him multiple times that everything was already forgiven. But in that specific moment, I just let him know again, like, everything's forgiven and, like, the, it's all behind us. And I just really, like, genuinely wished him all the best in his next and in his future. And I just prayed that he would just know how to receive good people moving forward and so I just left it at that and I just left it alone but as the day continued for some reason I just kept feeling a nudge to like express forgiveness again and I just couldn't understand it I'm like I already <laughs> I already said I forgave like I don't I don't know why I keep feeling like I gotta and in my spirit I just kept feeling this nudge by the end of the night I just heard God tell me take him to church and pray for him before he leaves this city. And I was like, I literally, <laughs> I literally was resistant to it because I was just like, what God? Like I, I told him I forgave already. At that stage, like I learned the hard way of trying to play savior in people's lives. So at that point when he was telling me that, I'm like, God, I said I surrendered this role to you. I'm not. <laughs> I'm not trying to have this backfire on me again. I, I've learned my I learned my lesson to not try to play savior. I I released that role to you. You got it. But when I said that, he pretty much didn't let me off the hook about it. And I'm like, okay. And so I was just really praying on it. And I remember I ended up just knowing that it was him telling me to do so. Because it wasn't me. And so I ended up telling my sister. When she told me this, I said... You're crazy. <laughs> Do you know like all you already did for this man and he didn't appreciate anything you did? So when she told me this, I was like, girl, stop opening up this door. Like you're going to keep going through if you keep if you keep overly loving him. But when she explained herself again, I just knew like she wasn't being led by her own emotions or anything. It was really God that was instructing her to do this. So she was just needing to be obedient to what he was saying. I already knew when I shared with her that I would receive backlash. Like I said, because I've tried to play savior so many times, I knew she was getting sick of me. <laughs> sick of me. <laughs> Genuinely, at that stage, I didn't want a relationship. I just simply wanted the very best for him and whatever God instructed me to do I was going to be obedient regardless of how I felt about it. We just agreed that it would be that upcoming Sunday that I would invite him to church and so I messaged him back and just asked him hey are you available Sunday just to have the opportunity to attend church before you leave out of town just to just bless your travels. Um, he responded, he said he would be available, but he just didn't have transportation, obviously, because of what happened. And so I was like, don't worry about it. I'll send you an Uber there, and then I would give him a ride back home. And when I went to bed that night, I was still really, really wrestling with it. I'm like, Lord, please don't let it be me. <laughs> if it's me, I already know how it's going to end up. It's always going to backfire if it's me. I need to make sure that it's you. And I just kept tossing and turning that night. I'm like, oh, Jesus, please don't let it be my heart leading because my heart will always lead me to the wrong way. And so I just couldn't sleep that night. I had a like a devotional subscription that usually gets sent to my inbox each day. And it usually gets sent like at three or four in the morning. So I woke up at three or four in the morning that night and just ended up going to my inbox to see what the devotional for that day was and the scripture for the day was Romans 12 and 18 which says if it be possible as much as lieth in you live peaceably with all men and immediately I was super convicted and in that moment God was really just showing me God was really convicting me at that time and through that scripture that I hadn't been living in peace at all during that season of my life like while I did forgive and like said over and over and over again that I forgave. In that moment, God was really showing me how I was living. And like I said, Milwaukee is super small. God was showing me an image of myself and how I was really like living in a cage, trying to avoid running into the person that hurt me the most. He was ultimately convicting me that I, while I like texted that I forgave, I didn't, there was still like some residue of unforgiveness in my heart because I was really 
doing all I could to avoid running into this person. I remember anytime we would try to like go out anywhere, like even to the store, she would just be really tense and kind of like pretty much looking over her shoulder all the time because she didn't want to run into into him. And there were several times that when she wasn't there, I did see him in public. So that would have been very triggering for her. So So God was saying, you're not living peaceably with all men. So after just really meditating upon that, I was like, okay, God, I'm going to just do this. And I'm going to just lean and trust in you for the strength to be able to just face the person that hurt me the most in person. And so that Sunday, I made sure that I set an Uber up, ride up for him because we are also serving that morning. So we couldn't necessarily bring him along with us because we had to be there early. Um, but I also wanted to be intentional about like keeping our distance because I didn't want it to be a thing where I was, again, trying to play savior. I wanted this to be an encounter where it was just solely him and God and I had no parts in it. Like I was going to let God be God and I was going to be in the back. So I was intentional about being all the way in the back. And he, when he arrived, I saw him from the back, but I made sure that he didn't see me. And when I tell you the message was fully God, like it was definitely God speaking even directly to how our relationship was. And by the end of the service, when when there was prayer time, I saw him with his hands lifted up and I immediately broke down in tears and I just saw how God was moving. And it was then that I felt that I could come out from behind and I felt led to lead him up to the altar to get prayer and then there were intercessors that began to surround him started to pray for him and just asking him what he needed prayer for and I could still see and sense that he was still a little resistant to fully receiving Christ into his heart but in that moment as I was like just praying for him I immediately felt like physical chains coming off of me like there's no way to explain it but I just felt like all the bondage being stripped off of me as I was praying for him and instantly I realized that the reason why God had told me to do this yes it was for him but more than anything it was for me to finally be free from the cage that I had been living in for so long trying to avoid my abuser and trying to continue to like stay guarded like God didn't want me to continue to be living in that state of fear and just constantly um, just not trusting anybody Mm. and just he saw that I was constantly in bondage because I hadn't fully released my heart again to God and being able to face the person that hurt me the most directly face to face and then pray for him that just that just set me so free. And in that moment, I really felt like I defeated my giant. I had always known about the scripture about like blessing your enemies. But in that moment, Matthew 5 verse 44 really came to life where Jesus had told us and instructed us. But I say, love your enemies, pray for those who persecute you. And I finally saw the power in that. When God tells us to do things that to us, that makes no sense. We're like, why would we do that? Like, they did me so wrong. How is that? I'm going to look like a punk Mm -hmm. if I do that. And I'm just not. Like, that doesn't even make any sense. What type of, that's not fair, God. That's not justice. A lot of times when we read passages or scripture that says to love your enemies or bless your enemies, that will make us resistant to it because everything in our flesh is like, that just makes me feel weak. But that's actually when you're the strongest because you're showing the enemy and those who tried to tear you down that they're not able to. Like whoever is persecuting you can't change your heart when you show them forgiveness and that you're showing them through your forgiveness that they can't change your heart. Like their goal was to break you down, but you still show that you can still be you and still be loving regardless of what they're trying to do. So yeah, it was just a super powerful time where God's word was being made alive and active in my life. And I was just so grateful to finally experience that type of freedom. And I'm just really wanting to share this with those of you who have been deeply hurt, deeply betrayed and have gone through deep, deep trauma. I personally know what that feels like. And I also know the only way I could have been fully free and fully healed is when I was able to actually face the very one that caused me the most pain. And 
I just want to really encourage you if this has been something that you have been sensing that you need to do or God has been leading you to do, definitely don't neglect doing it because I can say from personal experience, if had I never did that, I'm pretty sure I would still be stuck back there and never actually being able to progress. When I was led to do it, it was when God saw fit that I was ready to do so because I want you to be able to go forward. I don't want you forever stuck in your past. Also know that the journey of forgiveness is a journey, so you're not gonna feel like you forgave that person right away because your feelings are not fact. Again, your feelings will always lead you astray. So you should always be sober minded in your decision making and everything like that. And forgiveness is simply a decision you make up in your mind. So you just consistently practice a life of forgiving people who have harmed you and just knowing like you forgive the person in faith and your feelings will catch up to you later. And when you forgive, you just release it to God and he'll help you to release all the bitterness from your heart so then you don't end up walking into healthy relationships and damaging those. Harboring unforgiveness is really just keeping you bound to your past and it ultimately is a statement to God that you don't trust God with your heart again so you feel the need to hold on You're like no I've been so hurt I can't ever trust anybody with my heart so I'm holding I'm just gonna keep remembering what this person did to me so that I can never open my, my heart again but when you finally release the person that hurt you and release the person who did you wrong, that's really you giving your heart back to God. Like, okay, God, I trust you with my heart again. I trust that you will be the one to vindicate me. You will be the one to redeem me and restore my heart. I let it go and I lay it at the altar to you. And it's also important to forgive because not only is it for our personal freedom, but the scripture also says that if we don't forgive others, our Heavenly Father won't forgive us. So if we hold other people to their wrong, God won't forgive us because God sent his son Jesus to die for us and to forgive us of the wrong we did to him and our unloyalty to God and everything like that. And because he forgave us, then we are supposed to forgive other people for what they've done to us. That doesn't mean that they're allowed back into your life. You just release them and let the past be the past. Yeah, I just definitely hope that this encourages uh, anyone who may be wrestling through this decision and just through heartbreak, like definitely know it is a process. Don't rush the process and allow God to heal you in it as you continue to heal in order to accomplish and reach that full healing and to be able to step into your next is very critical to let your past go. Yeah, we just really appreciate all those who have shown support um, just throughout all of our, our stories that we share and for those who just have genuinely supported us in it and have just taken time to listen because it definitely, it can be a lot. Mm -hmm. um, it's definitely taken us a long time to actually wrap our head around our own experiences because of how intense it's been and it was like even a intense battle with even being able to write our book and our testimony and so us even putting our voice behind our story was even a bigger challenge yeah. because we're we can... typically people that uh just like to write yeah. and you know just write things out but to actually share with our voice that's another level of courage that it takes to verbalize it. These stories that we've shared primarily connected to our called experience. These were stories that we never wanted to rehash, never wanted to relive, never wanted to talk about ever again. Like we wanted just to completely forget or just act like that part of our life never ever ever happened. And so when we heard God tell us to write it, I'm like, why? Who wants to listen to these trash experiences like, say nightmare who would want to like what why would anybody want to know or why would anybody need to hear such a horrible a a horrific story like we have shared our stories with like on like different interview shows as well and all those titles have always been our horrific experience in that in that journey but even through us like coming out more and more with our testimony god has been consistently reminding us that he doesn't waste any experiences. Like even the most horrific and tragic experiences that you could ever go through, God uses that and works all things out for the good of those that love him. So that's what he means by that scripture. Like we think that God is only in the good parts of our life, but 
a lot of times God will use the very lowest moments of your life to make something even more beautiful. And that's the thing that a lot of times will birth purpose in your life. And ultimately, what really pushed us to finally obey God in just releasing our story through a book and when he also convicted us to start YouTube and start telling our story and just sharing the gospel through using our testimony. The only way he was able to get us to do it was when he convicted us and letting us know that, honey, I didn't deliver you for yourself. I delivered you so you can go back and get everybody else who, who needs freedom as well. Like I set you free so you can set other captives free from similar experiences from heartbreak from all that you've gone through like like each of us have in our lives have souls attached to our lives and when we keep our lives hidden and we don't share and we don't share those vulnerable parts of us there'll be those who believe oh it's just me that's going through this i don't think anybody would ever understand this but even as we have been just releasing our stories just seeing the responses and people who can relate that's just number one just been mind-blowing to us because i'm like I would have never thought <laughs> anybody would have anything similar to us. We thought, oh, ain't no way somebody would ever understand what we that's why. Through. That's why we tried to bury our story for so long because I'm like, who in the world would <laughs> understand what the heck we went through? But it was just encouraging because it shows like, even though we don't have the exact same experiences as everybody else, there are parts of our story that other people can relate to. And that's where we find the freedom and we can help other people by showing them how we have overcome those parts of our life. Just us wrestling and battling with, is this even a, a story with any value? Is this a story even worth sharing? Not only were we like internally battling with that, but knowing that the enemy also hates when you come out with your testimony and will try to slander you and will try to discredit you and tell you, oh, you didn't actually experience that. Oh, you didn't. Because even with our cult experience, when we first came out with it, like the leader and those who still were under his spell and under his um, mind control, even though they never actually met him, never actually experienced him, they always had the most to say like, oh, the people who experienced him, who actually were in that march in that journey, in that cult experience with us, they're, they're lying there. <laughs> like, it always just is mind boggling to me is that it's always the people that not were never there that always have the most to say or the people who didn't experience it for themselves that always will tell you oh you didn't actually go through that or how are you going to tell somebody about their testimony and that's why we were just silent about this story for four entire years what i've just learned over time regarding the people who will try to make you feel ashamed for sharing your story or um, make you feel like you don't have a right to tell your story and try to tell you about your own testimony oftentimes it's because they don't have the capacity to really comprehend what you've been through and like their minds can't fully fathom that that stuff actually happens in life and i've just learned to just extend grace to those people because if you haven't been through what i've been through or you haven't had even a ounce of what a revelation of what we've gone through like i can't possibly expect you to understand that so while it does hurt whenever we get that type of response i've just learned just to pray for those people that god increases their capacity uh, because in life if we're called to be brothers and sisters in christ we're supposed to lift one another up and like give room for people to share their testimony and especially like if their testimony is heavily connected to their walk with Christ, like who are you to shut out someone's story? And so that's why we're always so passionate about sharing and wanting others to share their story as well. Yeah. Like if, for those of you who know Reverend James Solomon and his story, like anybody who has read his story or knows his story, that sounds crazy. <laughs> like you'd be like, no way did this actually happen. Like this doesn't sound real, but that actually happens god wants all of us to grow to be able to grow in our compassion for one another when it comes to testimonies yeah. we just don't have the right to tell someone what's true and what's not when you don't you don't have any clue what they experienced we were completely silent about everything that we went through for all those years but as God was convicting us to be more open about what we went through, he was telling us like freedom comes from your voice. There's a sound that comes with freedom. In Jeremiah 33 verse 10, it says, Thus says the Lord, again, there shall be heard in this place of which you say it is desolate without man and without beast. 
in the cities of Judah, in the streets of Jerusalem that are desolate, without man and without inhabitant, and without beast, the voice of joy, the voice of gladness, the voice of the bridegroom, and the voice of the bride, the voice of those who will say, praise the Lord of hosts, for the Lord is good, for his mercy endures forever. And so basically what he was revealing to us in that scripture was that whenever God wants to restore your life or those parts of your life that have been completely destroyed by depression and trauma, he will start with reviving the sound of your voice because only when you're able to finally speak on those difficult moments of your life will you experience real freedom that's why for those who have been just recently finding our videos or just listening to our many testimonies that we come out with that's ultimately what god has been having us really focus on like just really owning our story owning our experiences and knowing like hey what you went through it was wild <laughs> like <laughs> that stuff actually happened and I can still use it all and turn it for your good. Like there's no experience, no pain, no heartbreak, no even embarrassment that you will ever go through that God cannot use for his glory. And so that's ultimately always our goal whenever we share any of our stories and experiences is to show that I'll, even though the enemy was preying on us, even though the enemy was out to get us and really just having a goal to destroy us even through all that god was still bigger and god still stepped in and god still pulled us out still protected us still kept us in our right mind because honey if it wasn't for god i would not be in my right mind i i don't know how i am <laughs> even in my right mind just going through all that we've been through but I'll never be able to stop talking about God because he has brought us through so much and I will forever give him the praise that he deserves. Yeah. Us sharing our story is not to draw attention to ourselves because we're the last people to want any type of attention, but it's to give God the glory and to show like he can take our life and show how he can completely transform transform us. And anytime we share a personal story, it always leads back to God at the end. So with this YouTube channel, our mission is to really empower you all to use your voice to share your story as well. Like through our example of us being able to come out with these experiences in our life, our hope is that through the courage that we have to come out and share about these testimonies, that you all find the courage to go back and look at over your life to see what are those places in my life where I've tried to bury and I've been completely ashamed of and I never wanted to speak about. Those are the parts of your life that God is wanting to bring back to life and to revive. He wants to redeem it because ultimately he doesn't want your story to end with pain. He doesn't want your story to end in destruction. God takes the very things that the enemy meant for evil and turns it for your good. And so if there are parts of your story that aren't good, that means God isn't done yet. And God can still work it out and turn things around in your favor. And if you guys are interested in us sharing some advice on how to find the courage to come out with your story and to know where to start, we can definitely share some of our personal experiences of how we've been able to like get to that space in our life. So we can definitely share that with you all in the next video. We just definitely appreciate those who do genuinely support us and do see our heart and humble to know that we can even bring any value to your life through us even sharing our stories um, and we just want to continue to encourage and empower you guys to own your story and to allow God to redeem every part of your life because God is definitely in the business of redemption and revival. Revival always has to start with us first. Hence why our website revival is spelled with our last names because it got to start with us before it hits anybody else. So, so we just really appreciate you all and we see we will see you guys in the next video.